Uh, here's the plan. I think I'm going to guess some of you have questions about graphing by hand. I'm going to do some examples of graphing by hand first. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about reciprocal trig functions and weird stuff. Then I'll do questions from the reviews. I have a feeling that's kind of the order of confusion or stress that there is out there. Okay? I will be posting this online. And if you stay till the end, I can also print up a hard copy of this tutorial for you so you can decide when's the end going to be when we finish. Although North Carolina is playing Duke tonight at 6 p.m. and I got company coming over to watch the game, so I'm hoping to be out of here by about 5.30-ish. But I'm PBRing it, and I told them my students come first, so if they got to wait till I get there, they can't get in my place anyways. Okay? Now, on your test... I'm going to give you two options to graph. On each page, I put both the lines and a grid. You can choose which method that you use. Just make sure you clearly indicate to me which one is your final answer. In other words, if you try it both ways, I'll just mark the first one I come to. But if you clearly circle arrows, this one, mark this one, whatever it takes for me to figure it out, then I'm good. Okay? So let's look at some graphing. There's always a risk when I make these up that these might turn out to be yucky. I'm going to graph with grid paper in the background because I think it'll make it easier for me to have my scale accurate and help you figure stuff out. Uh, you can decide whether you want to use a grid paper or just the lines. So, for example, the first graph that you're going to have on your test is going to be reasonably simple. It's not going to be one that has a vertical displacement or a phase shift. It'll be something like this. Here's hoping I don't make up exactly the same question. There's always that risk as well. But something like this. Uh, probably negative, just to make it interesting. 4 cos or sine. I'll go with cos of x over 2. I would still make a list, and on the on this question, I would also then, I think the question, Shanna, will say something like this. Graph the following and fill in the blanks, and you'll see it'll say right here, amplitude equals question mark, and then it'll also say period equals question mark, and it'll say phase shift, it won't be abbreviated, I'll write out the words, equals question mark, and then it'll say vertical displacement, again, that won't be abbreviated, that'll be written out equals question mark. And I would, no matter what, would always start out by filling this in anyways. What's the amplitude of this graph? Careful. Four. Good. What's the period? Careful. It's not one half. The period was defined as 2 pi over b, which is going to be 2 pi over 1 half which is going to be, I think, how do I divide by a fraction, flip it, and multiply, 4 pi. Right? Phase shift. There isn't one. When I say phase shift, what are you looking for? A number in brackets next to the x being minus or plus. And oh, alarm bell, make sure it's factored, although I told you I will give it to you factored if I ask you to graph it, but I will give you one on the test in the multiple choice section that's not factored and say, tell me the phase shift, and it's probably going to involve fractions because you guys suck at fractions. Vertical displacement. What's the vertical displacement? That would be something plus or minus out the brackets. Then, excuse me while I eat. I gave you two more things to find. I said you're going to find it really, really handy to take the period and divide it by 4. I won't ask you to fill in that blank because that's not actually a math term. That's Mr. Duick's own little invention. And the reason that is, Julie, we want to, when we graph, remember when we graphed our original sine and cosine, we had the four dots that match those four corners of the circle. We want to find where those are on my new period. So I take my new period, divide it by four, that tells me how far apart each dot's going to be along the x-axis. It tells me how far to go along before I put my next dot, how far to go along before I put my next dot. How far along to put my next dot? And remember we said the pattern was middle top, middle bottom, middle top, middle bottom, middle top, this. That's a pretty easy pattern to remember. If I take this period and divide it by 4, I get pi. 
it looks like each dot is going to be pi apart. And then the fifth thing, and again, I won't ask you for this, Regan, because it's one I made up. I said, I like to find what kind of a scale I'm going to go with. Now, I'm running out of room. Normally, I'd write scale down there. Do you mind, Regan? I'm going to write scale up here, if that's okay. And by scale, what I really mean is my horizontal scale. My vertical scale was almost always going up by ones or something like that. Because the amplitudes we kept and vertical displacements, we kept those pretty straightforward. What's my scale? It's the common denominator between all of my horizontals. And I don't know if you remember, I said an easy way to remember which one of your horizontals, they're the ones that have letter P in them. Horizontal, horizontal, horizontal. What's my common denominator? Sorry? One. Now, I should be careful. I said common denominator. What I should really say is uh, least common multiples. I think what I really want to do is I want to have a scale going up by pi's. I think. Because if I want each dot to be pi apart, wouldn't it make sense to have the scale go up by pi's? This is, this is an almost one. Because there's no vertical displacement, it actually almost made it tougher. Normally the, sorry, no, normally the phase shift would have been a fraction like pi over 3, and you would have said, oh, it's going to be pi over 3 as my common denominator. I've said common denominator. Do I want to say common, least common multiple denominator thing? Anyways, scale, go up by pi's, and you'll see why in a second. Then what I would do is I would sketch some kind of a grid. Again, on your test, you'll have the option to have graph paper or the blank lines. I'll use graph paper here. Something like that. And I spend more time setting up the scale and setting up the graph than I actually do graphing. I think it's worth it. First thing I do is the vertical stuff. What's my vertical displacement here? It's a trick question. Zero. What's the amplitude? Four. So how high is this graph going to go? How low is this graph going to go? Well, not four. Negative four. Okay. So I would probably go one, two, three, four. One, two, three negative 4. If you were freehanding this, what I would probably do is go 4 and 4, and then I would just divide that in half. If I, so if I would had this, I would also probably then go that's 2, that's 2, that's 1, that's 1, that's 1, that's 1. But since I have my graph paper in the background, I'll just do that. Is that okay? And I would add dotted lines. I'll change colors. I add a dotted line along the top. I add a dotted line because that's the middle of my graph, my vertical displacement, wherever it is. And I add a dotted line along the bottom because, Regan, what this tells me is my graph is going to bounce like that. That's a huge advantage. At least I know I'm going to get this part right. It takes all of one second, two seconds to do it, but it's, it's really, really helpful. The next thing I would do is I would label my x-axis scale. What's my period? How long is one graph, according to this question? So I would need to make sure that I at least fit in 4 pi. And then I would convert my scale to some kind of common denominator. Since I'm going up by pi's, since each dot's going to be pi apart, I guess, to keep it simple, I could go 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi. Or I could go up by 2's if I really wanted to with the graph paper to make my life easy. But to keep it simple and straightforward, I'll go like this. That's 4 pi. 1, 2, 3. That's 8 pi. So that would be 2 pi. That would be 6 pi. And in between each of those would be 1 pi. I'm putting the hash marks in because I think I think when I hit print, Julie, I think it'll print like that. So if I, it won't print the graph paper in the background. So those of you that want copies, so I'll put the hash marks in there. And I've done the hard work now. What's the phase shift? Zero. That means my first dot's going to be on this line somewhere, because you always start horizontally wherever your phase shift is. What's my vertical displacement? That means my first dot's going to be on this line somewhere as well. Oh, no, wait, 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 wait. What am I graphing? 
Where does cosine start? I'm not graphing cosine. Where? Okay. I already know then where my first dot's going to be. It's got to be where the phase shift and, I can't say the middle, uh, the cos or the sine, wherever it starts appropriately, intersect. First dot's going to be right there. Where's the next one going to be? Middle, then top, then middle, then bottom, then middle. In other words, it's going to go boom, 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 boom. I just need to find how far apart the dots are. That's why I divided the period by four. Shannon, got a question? Uh, feel free to ask because I don't think I've done a great job of explaining how to graph by hand. So if you have the question, probably you're not the only one. And I'm not quite sure because I taught this lesson so disjointed. This is where we had some short classes and stuff away and things. Yeah. Top. What if it was sine? Here. What if it was negative? Uh, here and the next one would have been top. What if it was negative sine? Here and the next one would have been bottom. Right? Sine starts in the middle, and if it's positive, goes up. If it's negative, goes down. Which kind of actually is easy to remember. Positive goes up, negative goes down. That almost sounds like physics. Okay? Uh, let's keep going. So the reason I divided the period by 4, Shannon, did I answer your question okay? The reason I divided the period by 4 was to tell me, once I find that first dot, when is the next one? And again, we're always relating it back to the four corners of our circle. Normally, we would go 2 pi divided by 4. Every dot was pi by 2. But here, my period is 4 pi. Divide that by 4. Every dot's going to be how far apart? Pi, which also happens to be my scale here. In other words, bottom, middle, top, middle, bottom, middle. Top, middle. I can keep going. Bottom, middle, top, middle, bottom. I want. I think on the test, I ask you to graph one complete period. And if you can't quite fit your graph where you want, don't forget you could also go backwards if you just if you run out of room going forwards because you're like, ah, I didn't make my line long enough, Regan, or I'm getting crowded. Go backwards because Regan, if I'm the bottom here, what am I going to be here? Middle. What about here? Top. It, it's going to look something like this. Something like that. How would I mark this? I would first of all give you a half mark each for these four things. In other words, if you can list this, you'll pass the question. I tried. To, I did that on purpose. Then the remaining two marks would be for the graph. Probably I would do something like this. I would give you a half mark if you got the up and down railings in the right place, and I could see that you'd gone between negative four and positive four. I would probably give you a half mark if I could clearly see that you'd started at the bottom. If somewhere I could see your starting point, and oh, you recognize it's negative cos. Good. Um, for a more complicated graph, I'd give you a half mark for the vertical displacement and a half mark for the phase shift. Here, I'd probably just give you one mark for the proper shape or something like that. If I'm marking this, to be honest, what I do is scan down these. I can do that really fast. And then what I do is I find two points. And if your two points match my two points, I assume you didn't fluke into it. I assume the rest of the graph is right. Because I'll notice if one of the points is wrong, your coast graph won't look symmetrical. I'll, I'll spot it from a distance. Let's do a more complicated one. This one had no phase shift and no vertical displacement. That will be what your first question is like. Oh. There is a simpler way to do this one only because of the fact that it has no phase shift and no vertical displacement. This was the approach that I also gave you near the beginning of the unit. I said for these ones, because we're not sliding it left, right, or up, down, there was a simple cheat, and that was to just change the scale. So method number two, and this one you can see I've nuked the graph paper. I would do this and this. This graph here is based on negative cos. You see it hidden in there? What does negative cos look like? Where does negative cos start? Negative cos start? Okay. Negative cos would look like this. This would be negative 1. 
and pause it. Ignore the four, ignore the over two, ignore all that. It would start down here and it would finish down here. How far? How far? How far? Pi by two. How far? Negative cos would look like this. And what I told you you could do as a cheat, if there's no phase shift or vertical displacement, remember we say sometimes it's easier to change the graph paper than it is to change the graph. Because I'll show you what I can do here to get one full wave. Let me shut the door behind you, please. Better late than never, but better never late. Um, what really should be, what number, hello, what number should really be here for this graph? Not a negative one, but a what? What number should really be here for this graph? Not a one, but a what? Four. And what's the period? You'd still have to list everything. You'd still have to find the period. But what did we say the period of this graph was? I've scrolled down a little bit. What? Four pi? In other words, from here to here should be how long? Oh, so if you put a 4 pi there, what's that? Please do the simple math. 2 pi, you're done. Now that trick only works if you have no phase shift or vertical displacement. And please be careful to make sure you notice whether it's negative sign or positive sign or negative cos or positive cos. Will that work if there's a phase shift or a vertical displacement? Nope. You have to do a lot more work. But if you're looking for kind of a nice little easy bailout or a way to check your answer after you've done it the long way, that'll get you there. I suppose you who just got here late, what I said, we're going to spend some time talking about how to graph by hand because I think that's where most of the confusion is. Then I'll spend some time talking about the reciprocal trig functions and what I'm going to ask, the weird stuff, asymptotes, domain, all that junk. Uh, and then I'll take questions from the review. Let's do one with a phase. Let's do one with the whole schmear. Y equals, let's go negative again. Go three, let's go sine. Let's go, oh, I'm trying to do some math in my head, sure. Three, X, plus um, <coughs> 5 pi by 6 plus 1. about as tough as I'll throw at you. Okay. First of all, I would hope you could still at least not get zero. You can list the stuff, and I would still ask you to do the same thing. So if I gave you a question like this, I hope this works out nice. I was trying to do a bunch of math in my head to not get a terribly, terribly yucky scale. We'll see. What's the amplitude? Three. What's the period? Not three. Okay, you need this part. You need this part. You just need to memorize. The period doesn't actually appear in the equation. We always have to calculate it. And what was the period defined as? Two pi over b. What number is sitting where the b is? That's my period. Two thirds of pi. Phase shift. is what? Whoa. Uh -oh. Five five by six isn't quite right. Oh, did someone say a word after that? Sorry? I yeah, say it? Left. Or you know what? Can I just write negative five five it, it's moved to the left. Remember back brackets backwards, last unit stuff, right? Question? Don't be scared to ask. I, I, I don't think I, I <coughs> excuse me. I don't th feel I nailed this lesson. In fact, 
uh, <clears throat> whoever I taught it to first that morning, I totally chucked it and redid the whole lesson. So whether it was my block E's or my block X, I can't remember which ones I had first that day, but I sucked. That was the worst lesson I've done in years. Terrible. Really. Oh, uh, one more. Vertical displacement. One. And then there's the two magic ones that I've added. You know what? I'll write them both over here so that they're not in the list of the four. I always took the period and I divided it by four. Here's my original period. If I divide that by four, really what I'm saying is put an extra four in the denominator. It'll be two pi over 12. Although, in lowest terms, pi over 6, right? And then the last one I said, I always find the scale. And what I mean is the x scale, how I want my x-axis to go to make it easy to count. What's my scale going to be here? The common... I'm going to say common denominator, but it's going to have a pi in it. Uh, I'm going to look here, here, and here. I'm going to look here, here, and here. I think a scale that would be useful would be pi by 6. And to make my life as easy as possible, Jen, I'm even going to convert my period to 6. This one's already 6. This one's already 6. This one's already 6. I'm going to convert my period. I'm going to say 4 pi by 6, or since each square is going to be pi by 6, four squares long. If I'm not back where I started from after four squares, in terms of my height, I've, I've goofed. Let me show you just a, for a second why I'm so paranoid about finding a, appropriate period. Take a look at, suppose your grid paper looked like that. Don't write this down, just watch. So I'm going to go clip. I'm going to go clip. Come on. Okay. Right here. This is why it's worth finding a period that's useful. Uh, oops, covering up the writing, Mr. Duick. Move it down a little bit. How long is one wave? 2 pi by 3. Um, how long is 2 thirds pi here? Can you see it doesn't fit into the squares at all? Because here, each square is worth one quarter pi. How can you tell how far one period is? Or how far apart is each dot? Each dot is going to be pi by 6 apart. Well, pi by 6 is a, about that, sort of, kind of, sort of, maybe, kind of, sort of. So that's why it's really worth planning your attack. I don't know if that confused you or helped you. Let me nuke the graph out of the way. I'm going to bring back my grid paper. Again, you can freehand this if you want to or not. So if you're freehanding, you'd have a line, and you'd have a line. I always do verticals first. Jen, what's my vertical displacement? What's my amplitude? So how high is this graph going to go? How low? Negative two. So I would make sure if I was freehanding that I had hash marks that went four high and negative two. Um, you know, I notice on this sketch that I've done, I have eight squares right here. So I'll go up by twos. I'm going to go one, two, three, one, two, one, two, four. And I'll go negative, oh, hang on, Mr. Luke, you didn't label the negative one. Negative two, negative three, negative four. Jen, how high did my graph go? Dotted line. How low did my graph go? Dotted line. What's my vertical displacement? Sorry? Middle. 
just taking the time to do that, to put your vertical displacement and then amplitude up and amplitude down from there, that gets rid of a lot of mistakes. I mean, clearly I, I can see what this graph is going to look like at least vertically, what it's going to bounce between. Horizontal scale now. What did I want each square to be worth? Pi by 6. So if I was freehanding this, I would say, well, there's pi, there's 3 pi by 6, and then I would break it up into thirds. Since I have graph paper, I'm actually going to count six squares. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's pi. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's two pi. And let's go backwards. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's negative pi. By doing that, Sarah, by getting the scale right, by getting the vertical displacement and amplitude right, I've cut down on most of the room for mistakes, I hope. What's my phase shift, Sarah? Negative 5 pi by 6. What's each square worth? 1 pi by 6. I think what you're really saying is my phase shift is 5 squares left. Right? In other words, my first point is going to be somewhere on that line right there. I'm going to get rid of that, though, because that clutters things up too much. So my first point is going to be somewhere here. Where? Where? Well, am I graphing sine or cosine? I'm going to be fussy. I'm not really graphing sine either. Okay, so it's going to start in the middle. That means it's going to start right there. But my next point is going to be top or bottom? It's bottom. I'm going to go down. You ready? Let's graph. Phase shift of five squares left. Middle, because it's sine. When I divided the period by four... <coughs> By a fluke, it ended up being the same scale. That means each dot is going to be one square apart. What if it ended up being, for example, 5 pi by 6? Well, then each square would be 5. Each dot would be 5 squares apart. Or if it ended up being 2 pi by 6, pi by 3, each square would end up being 2. Each dot would end up being 2 squares apart. But here, pi by 6 matches my scale. My next dot is going to be 1 square over where? Bottom. One square over, where? Middle. One square over, where? Top. One square over, middle. One square over, bottom. One square over, middle. Top. It's going to look kind of like a compressed graph. It's kind of squashed, but that's okay. Something like that, and that's more than one period. That'll be enough. Do, you want me to do one more, or is that okay? I'll do one more. And then we'll do some reciprocal trig functions, and then we'll do Q&A. Ah, let's try and make one up that doesn't work out quite so nice so that we can do a challenge here and find the test ones easier. Ah, sure, let's try that. Eesh, this could be ugly, but that's okay. y equals 2 cos bracket five bracket x minus sure uh, pi by 2 close bracket plus 3 
hoping this one will be a bit yuckier than the two that I made up. Still going to list everything. Amplitude. Two. Period. Don't say five. Two pi over five. Which is probably going to be a fairly yucky one, but that's okay. Phase shift. Vertical displacement. And then the two that I add, take the period and divide it by four to find out how far apart the dots are going to be. Dividing it by four means putting an extra four in the bottom. You'll have two pi over 20, or pi over 10. And this one also is working out a little bit too nice. So give me one second. We're going to change one number without changing a bunch of stuff. But let me do some math in my head, if that's OK. Let's, uh, instead of making this pi over 2, can you all look up, please? Can you all look up, please? Hello? Instead of making this pi over 2, take that 2, take that 2, make them both 4s. Sorry about that little interruption. Now, uh, that's period divided by 4. That means each square, each dot is going to be pi over 10 apart. And the other thing I said is let's pick a scale, and our scale is going to be a good common denominator between anything with a P in it, any horizontal. What do I have on the bottom here? 5 here, 4 here. You know what? I think pi over 20. That's what I was trying to get, something a little yuckier. Pi over 20. And I'm going to find a common denominator then. I'm going to write this as 2 pi over 20. Gen, every dot's going to be two squares apart this time. That's what I'm trying to get. Two squares apart, not one square apart. Oh, and uh, the phase shift is going to be over 20 over 5 pi over 20. I'm going to move five squares right before I graph. And the period is going to be times by 4 times by 4. 8 pi. That's an 8, Mr. Duick. over 20. Uh, one whole wave should be eight squares long. If I'm not at the same height as I started from every eight squares, I'm doing this wrong. We'll do, uh, do you want me to use graph paper or do you want me to freehand? We'll do democracy. Who would prefer graph paper left on? Who would prefer freehand graph paper turned off? Some of you weren't paying attention and don't care, but the freehander is one, so we'll go with that. Uh, is my phase shift to the left or to the right? Is my phase shift to the left or to the right? So if I was freehanding, then I would say, you know what? Let's put my y-axis way over here and give myself lots of room going that way. How do I change a 5 into a 20? Multiply by what? Multiply by? Right, good old math 8 common denominator stuff. In fact, I would, I'm going to do one more thing. Now, if you've already written this, you're fine. If you're pencil, you can fix this. Because um, what's my vertical displacement? Three. Amplitude. How high is this going to go? How low? You know, if I was really clever, what I would actually do is probably put that line down here because everything's going to be up there. Now, if you didn't do that, it's fine. But if you can erase it, great. Because how high did you say I was going to go? We're doing verticals first now, right? How high did you say I was going to go? There's five. This is a bit of a tough one to eyeball for me. So I want to divide that into five roughly equal, well, as not roughly, equal chunks. 
This is where if you don't have graph paper, you have a bit of advantage. Or if you have a ruler, you can measure it and divide by five and put hash marks. I'm going to eyeball it. I think it's going to be one, two, three, four. Ooh, that was pretty good for me. How high? Five. How low? Three up, and from there, two down. How low? One. I'll label that and vertical displacement. It's kind of weird because I don't think you've ever labeled a graph one, three, and five before. Usually you labeled it two, but it's going to be way easier for me to do that, and I'm not going to take marks off. Graphing is, you know, scales are meant to make it easier and be convenient. Oh, I would add my dotted lines. I would add my dotted lines. I would add my dotted lines. Scale. What do I want on the x-axis each square to be worth? Pi over 20. Yeah. Put your pencils down and watch. I could do this. This would be yucky, so don't do this. I could go, well, let's make that pi. What would that be? Pi over 2, or you know what? Let's make this... 20 pi over 20. What would that be in terms of 20s? 10. That means I'd have to try and fit 10 hash marks in here. Uh, yeah. Not good. I still want to use as much as graph paper as possible. But I think, uh, how long is one wave? How many squares? Eight? You know, instead of calling this pi, 20 pi over 20, why don't I make this pi by 2? Because that's going to be 10 pi over 20. That's 10 squares. Uh, how many do I want to fit in to get one whole wave? Uh, that should fit. So I'm going to go 10 pi over 20. Pi over 2. What would that be? 5 pi over 20, pi over 4, 5 pi over 20. And then I'll try and divide these into 5 chunks again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, that didn't work quite so well, Mr. Dewitt. A little larger. Nope, too much. 1, 2, 3, 4. That's better. 1, 2, 3, 4. And, oh, well. This one, graph paper, would have been way more helpful, but you guys voted. I've done the hard stuff. Can you see, first of all, what the graph's going to bounce between? Right? Uh, what are we graphing? Sine, cos, negative sine, or negative cos? Cos, I'm going to start up high. It's going to start somewhere there. Ooh, phase shift. What's my phase shift? It was pi by 4, but I found a common denominator that matched my scale. 5 pi over 20. What's 1 square worth? 1 pi over 20. How many squares right? 5. 1, 2, 3, 4. Oh, right here, conveniently enough. Where am I going to start right here? A pi. Right? Hey, hey. When's my next dot going to be? When I divided the period by 4, I got pi over 10, found a common denominator. Each square is pi over 20. How many squares apart is each dot going to be? See it? So, 1, 2, uh, middle. I'll drop back down to the x-axis to help me count again. 1, 2, bottom. 1, 2, Ooh, I ran out of room. Oh, no, 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 no. What's the other direction I can go? Let's go backwards. So, starting here, one, two squares backwards, where will I be? Middle. One, two squares backwards, where will I be? Bottom. One, two, well, you know what? I've run out of room, but I'm pretty sure I got a whole wave, because don't I have two points that are at the same height along the bottom? That's one whole wave. It's going to look like this. Now, some of you may say, Mr. Duick, that looks like negative cosine. Well, no, no. We started there to get positive cosine. I guess a negative cosine graph, I could have phase shift 
one square right and it'd be the same graph for what it's worth but i'm not fussy on how much of a section you give me like i said i usually look for two or three points and if you got those right i can tell if you aren't symmetrical that's probably a little bit of a yuckier scale than you'd ever have to deal with on your test 20s it's usually going to be sixths or halves or quarters or thirds or the most i've ever done it twelfths but twelfth actually works nice because three goes into it and four goes into it and six goes into it and two goes into it it's actually kind of a nice scale pi by twelve fifteen degrees for those of you who are scorekeeping at home okay yeah the phase shift tells you where to start your graph what it's really saying is where did this line get moved to because normally whenever I just sketch sine or cos, I always just started right there it's really where that got moved to just like your vertical displacement is actually where your x-axis got moved to how far apart again it comes from this one period was once around the circle before we did anything with it we divided it into four chunks because that was the four corners of our circle we want to continue to use that because it is a handy pattern middle top middle bottom middle top middle bottom how can I use that well whatever new period they give me if I divide it by four, that's got to tell me where those four corners are, how far apart each of those four corners is on the graph. Does that make sense? I hope I made that clear. I hope, I hope, I hope. If not, watch this tutorial again when you get home. I hope. But that's enough on graphing. Let's talk about the reciprocals of this. Okay. And what we said is I, I did a bit on graphing. I figured that was where the most confusion was. Then I'm going to talk about reciprocal trig functions. Then I'll do Q&A questions from the reviews. Okay. Reciprocals. And when I say reciprocals, because the reciprocals have like asymptotes and weird stuff, I'm going to include tangent here in my explanation because tangent is the ugly cousin, even though it's technically not a reciprocal. Although it is, you just don't know that yet. Um, What's it a reciprocal of? Well, it's actually sine over cosine, but that's a whole other issue. Um, I'm going to kind of lump it in here. All right. So start out like this. Give the domain. And I'm going to start out, I'll use the word easy. I don't think any of these are all that easy. I'll start out less complicated. And I'll go beyond, I think, what I'd feel comfortable asking you on the test. So that hopefully you'll find the test good. So, domain. y equals tan x. What's the domain? No idea. Well, that's a lie. I've, since I'm teaching this fresh, I've taught it to three classes in a row. I have actually memorized it finally. I normally never did. I do a sketch of tangent. What have I told you to memorize about tangent? What does tangent go through? Zero, zero, that's a fairly easy one to remember, I hope. So I would go like this. Tangent, tangent, tangent. Ooh, let's use the funky graph paper that I have. Zip, zip. I would say it goes through zero, zero. Remember, it's got asymptotes right there and right there. Where is right there and right there? What are the x values of those asymptotes? Now, you got to be careful because every time I've been doing this last few days, people have started to say pi. It's 90 and negative 90. If you're looking for an easy way to, because 90 degree angle, that's one of the ones we, you know, it's a right, it's a right angle and a right angle. You can't take the tangent of 90. What's 90 in radians? Not pi. Because, yeah, 180 is pi. It's pi by 2. Oh, hang on, Mr. Duick. The tangent graph looks like that. Okay? Its domain is all reals except, because it repeats itself, it then goes like this, 
like this. It continues going like that. Its domain is everything but. Its domain is everything but. Its domain is all x's except. That's why its domain is an x not equal to. Not equal to what? Where's my first hole? Where's my first asymptote? Where's the first location where tangent doesn't exist? And then they occur every so often. How often? Well, how far apart are these two? Exactly pi. That's why I memorized that picture. It tells me they're pi apart. It's going to be pi over 2 plus multiples of pi where n is an integer. What if instead of give the domain, what if I said give the asymptotes? It's almost identical. The asymptotes are the equations of these lines sitting in this gap. They're vertical lines. What's the equation of any vertical line? x equals. y equals is horizontal. x equals is vertical. Where would they be? Well, if I asked you instead for the equations of the asymptotes, it would be x equals pi over 2 plus multiples of pi, where n is an integer. And if you're thinking that looks an awful lot like domain, yeah, you're right. Except, no, no. Domain is where the holes are, where, the, where tangent does not exist. So it's a not equal to. The equations of the asymptotes is, hey, where do those asymptotes exist? It's an equal to. And I kind of remember that because I will always ask you for, listen closely, equations of the asymptotes equal sign. Domain. Don't for an equal sign. Not equal to. I don't know. Whatever works for you. But you've got to remember it somehow. What about um, B? Y equals cotangent X. No idea. Oh, no, no, wait, wait, I, I can figure this out. <sighs> what does cotangent go with? Tangent, that's why I desperately tried to leave that tan graph up on the screen there. I was going to scroll down. No, I don't want to do that because cotangent will have asymptotes as well. Where? It will have asymptotes where tangent <laughs> is how high? What? Remember our reciprocal? What gave us asymptotes? Zero high. Where is tangent zero high? What point did I tell you to memorize for tangent? What does tangent go through? Zero, zero. Where will cotangent have its first asymptote then? X equals zero. And then how far apart will they be? What was the period of tangent? Guess what the period of cotangent is? Okay, I I'm going to write this, but th this is my brain process. If they give me cotangent, I go sketch tangent somewhere, and I really remember my reciprocal stuff. Oh, by the way, I don't think I'm asking you this, but I've seen them ask once in a while in the provincial exam. Where would cotangent have zeros, have x-intercepts, have roots? Wherever tangent has asymptotes, because we said this, for reciprocals, zero high gave us asymptotes, asymptotes gave us zero high when we did the reciprocal thing. Anyways, let's do the domain then. I'll make we'll make a little note where tan theta equals zero, cotangent theta is undefined. We'll have asymptotes. So where does tangent equal zero? Conveniently at zero, not too bad. And then pi further, pi further, pi further, pi. Oh, so domain, that's what x can't be. It's everything except zero plus multiples of pi, where n is an integer. Although I think I've told you if this is multiple choice, 
sometimes they don't bother writing the zero plus because what's zero plus pi m? I think just pi m. But in our notes, let's leave the zero plus to remind us that's how we found it. We said, let's go find the first one and then their pi apart. What if I asked you for the equation of the asymptotes of cotangent? And if you're thinking it looks an awful like a domain, Lorentz, you're right. Because the asymptotes is, hey, what are the equations of those vertical lines where tangent, where cotangent has its gaps? So far, so good? Yep. We're gonna gonna get there next. Yep. I'm gonna do secant and cosecant really quick, and then we'll do let's muck around and stick stuff in there and see what happens. Okay. Still okay? I, I'm I'm hoping to be done this section by about quarter after four, and then we'll go Q and A. So I'm trying to budget your time. I think we can get there. <sighs> But yes, in answer to your question, yes. Uh, oh, C. Cosec oh, let's do it. Y equals cosecant x. They want the domain. Or they want the equation of the asymptotes. I don't know. Ah, no, wait a minute. I'm smart. I can figure this out. What does cosecant go with? Sine, ah, that one I know. I would do a little sketch of sine right now. What does sine look like? Sesame Street is brought to you by the sine graph, the letter S, sort of. And this is our basic sine graph before we've changed anything. So good old amplitude of one and negative, well, a one, how high, negative, positive one, how low, negative one, period, two pi. Here's my question. Where will the reciprocal have asymptotes? wherever sine is how high. Oh, this sounds very similar to tangent and cotangent. Wherever sine is zero high. Now, where is sine zero high? Here, here, and here. Oh, I can tell you those values. Zero. What's this value right here? Pi. What's this value right here? Uh, can you spot the pattern? When would the next one be? Three pi, then? 4 pi, then, but in fact, I think the domain is all x's except starting at 0, multiples of pi, where n is an integer. Now, you may be noticing a lot of these answers are looking the same. Hey, that this also happens to be the domain of cotangent. It's because it just happens to have asymptotes in the same location. You can't just memorize and say, oh, they're always going to be the same. They won't always be the same, but... For what it's worth, these two are. Oh, what if I asked you for the equation of the asymptotes? Instead of saying x can't be 0 plus multiples of pi, you would say equation of the asymptote. Equation, oh yeah, equal, x equals 0 plus multiples of pi. That's the equations of the vertical lines. Is that okay? I'm going to add one more, though, for cosecant. Range. You see, Andre, cosecant, we already agreed with me, we have asymptotes there, there, and there. What point would be invariant? What was the invariant height when we did reciprocals? What point, What heights never changed? See, that would stay, that would stay, and then closer to zero shoots off to infinity, closer to zero shoots off to infinity. This black graph is what cosecant would look like. What's its range? Well, it's actually two graphs. See it? going to be two ranges. There's no easy, convenient way to write this as a one-line statement. Don't even try. It would be everything below and touching negative one. See it? Right. That's this graph. Comma, or, and, whatever you want to write. Everything above and touching positive one. That's this graph. So if they change this and they ask me a range question if they do vertical stuff here this is what i would fall back on still always saying you know what i know signs so well i can sketch whatever i need to secant 
and then we'll do weird ones. Y equals sec uh, secant x. Domain. I don't know. Uh, wait a minute. No, I'm not going to take a zero on this. I can figure this out. Uh, secant goes with which trig function? I'd be silly if I didn't at least sketch cosine. Uh, cosine, oh, that was the one that started up high and finished up high. And that meant it was down low over here, and it was middle, middle. Because the pattern was top, middle, bottom, middle, top, middle, bottom, middle, top. In fact, it looked like this. Hmm. Where will secant have asymptotes wherever cosine is how high? Yeah, it's going to have them here and here and continuing. But let's see if I can't spot the pattern. <gasps> Ooh, uh, uh. What is, sorry, pi by 2 and 3 pi by 2. By the way, what number is in front of the pi here? It's invisible. One. I think it's 1 pi by 2, 3 pi by 2. I think the next one's 5 pi by 2, 7 pi by 2. It's, it seems to be odd numbers of pi by 2s. I've, I've spotted the pattern, though. It's this. X can't be. Where's the first hole occur? Pi by 2. Plus, how far apart are the holes? Conveniently, once again, exactly pi. What if they wanted the equation of the asymptotes? Oh, x equals pi over 2 plus multiples of pi where n is an integer. What would this graph look like? Well, remember it would have asymptote there, asymptote there. Andre, what were the heights that remained invariant? Do you remember? That means this height, this height, and this height would stay the same. Let's do this one here. Getting closer to zero shoots off to infinity. Getting closer to zero shoots off to infinity. Let's stand here. Getting closer to zero shoots off to infinity. Getting closer to zero shoots off to infinity. In fact, it would, it's off the page, but those little U-ish kind of shapes look something like that. So I can tell you the range. Oh, conveniently, same range as cosecant. y less than or equal to negative 1 comma y greater than or equal to 1. So hopefully you've already noticed lots of symmetry, lots of similarity between these. Now let's spend 15 minutes or so looking at weird ones and let's try and eventually get a little tougher than I would ask on your test. Okay. E. Find the domain of y equals 3 cotangent of 2x, close bracket. This is what you were wondering about, right? So they're asking me to find the domain. What would the range be? Remember, cotangent and tangent have a range of all reals, so you know what the range is still? All reals. What's that three in front do, vertical or horizontal? It's a vertical stretch, so if you're already from negative infinity to positive infinity, you make it three times as far, you're still from negative infinity to positive infinity. So the range isn't going to change. Which means I probably won't ask you a range question about tangent or cotangent. Boring. Just like I won't ask you a domain question about sine or cosine. Boring sine and cosine have all reals with no gaps. But I'm asking domain here. Is there a horizontal transformation occurring in this question? What? Uh, okay. Ignore it temporarily. 
first I would find, just pretend there's no two there, I would find the domain of just good old cotangent. How would I do that? I don't know the domain of cotangent. What's cotangent go with? Okay, I would go like this. Zip, zip. Tan looks like that. Oh, boy, that's terrible. Tan looks like that. Oh, yeah, Mr. Duick says that cotangent's going to have an asymptote where tangent is zero. Normally, the domain would be like this. X can't be zero. And then this is the period of tangent multiples of pi. Now that's normally. What has this done? Horizontal what? Compression by a half. And what that's going to do is that's going to put an extra 2 in the bottom of everything. So that instead of your asymptote being here and then the next one over here, it would divide this one by 2. But what's 0 left, right, divided by 2? Still 0 left, right. But it would also move this guy over to there, half as far away. In other words, they're not going to be as far apart. The domain, if I tidy it up, would be 0 plus multiples of pi over 2, where n is an integer. What if instead of a 2, what if they put a 5 there? Divide by 5, divide by 5, would be 0 plus pi over 5 times n. Ooh, what if they got nasty? What if they gave me a fraction? We better practice that one. Yeah. Y equals secant of 2x over 3. Can you pretend that's written as a fraction? Secant of 2x over 3. Ah! No, relax. Where's Haley? Oh, not here. Okay. <sighs> First of all, is that a horizontal? So it's going to change the domain, but I'm going to ignore it. First, I'm going to find the domain of just plain old secant and then I'll make whatever adjustments that I need. Oh, I don't know secant. Secant goes with which trig function? Cos. Cos looks like this. You'll notice I'm getting a bit sloppier in my sketches because I'm hoping you're getting a bit better at this. You know what? Secant's going to have asymptotes there and there. What is there and there? I heard it over here already. Pi over, okay. Normally, x can't be pi over 2, and then it's every pi apart, because that distance there is pi, where n is an integer. Everything is still backwards when you're in the brackets. What's this 2 doing to the x? Divide, divide. What's this 3 doing to the x? Dividing times times. It, it, by the way, for what it's worth, 2x over 3, that's an expansion factor of 3 over 2. But if you want to, you can just treat them each as separate little factors. Oh, times by 2? That's going to divide the graph in 2. Divide by 3? Oh, that we've multiplied by 3. Now, I'd tidy this up clearly. Mike, I'd write this as x can't be 3 pi by 4 plus multiples of 3 pi by 2, where n is an integer. Is that OK? Whatever period thing they throw at me, I can adjust. I can tweak. I go back to my original always. Now, I keep saying that. Some of you may have memorized, because I already heard right when I drew the, uh, or right when I wrote down secant, someone already said the domain. You may have memorized the domain already, and great, but I'm, you know, I'll always fall back on a test on my safety. 
I know sine, cosine, and tangent inside and out. I can figure out anything about the reciprocals from those that I need to. Okay, let's do a phase shift. Phase shift, little trickier. And then we'll do a period change and a phase shift. And then I think that's all I can throw at you. Here, I think it's as tough as I can get. Oh, yeah. Equals. Uh, let's see, I've done cotangent, I've done secant. Oh, uh, cosecant, thank you. Couldn't remember the function. Cosecant of, what did I say, a phase shift? Phase shift, right? X minus. Ah, I don't know where the pi button is. <laughs> Stupid, Mr. Do it. Pi over, oh, pew, that's very good. Pi over 4. Can you put a pi symbol there, please? This one is a tiny bit trickier. Can you all look up for a second? Okay, you need to watch them and do a bit of a visual illustration here. Cosecant. Let's suppose the asymptotes are this far apart, and they're right here. When I phase shift it, I'm sliding it left-right. In this case, I'm sliding it to the right because it's minus. Will that change how far apart the asymptotes are? In other words, phase shift, I'm only going to change my starting point, but not my plus multiples of whatever. That's the only slightly tricky part. Right? Although, in some ways, it's easier because it's less work. But just don't get carried away with always changing. So, um, cosecant, I don't know. Uh, or, uh, cosecant goes with uh, sine. Sine looks like that. Okay, normally it was here, here, and here. Oh, uh, normally it was x can't be 0 plus multiples of pi where n was an integer. But this whole thing, this whole graph, has been moved to the right. How far? Pi by 4. It's been moved pi by 4 to the right. So you know what? I think instead of my first asymptote starting at 0, where will it start at? Pi by 4. Will the distance between them change for a phase shift, though? No. Instead of starting at 0, you move pi by 4 to the right. So that's where your first asymptote is going to occur. But since you haven't stretched or shrunk it at all, there's still going to be pi apart. Do I want to do a combined? That's harder than what's on. On the test, I'm giving you one or the other, but not both. Okay. I've done cotangent, secant, and cosecant. Tangent behaves similarly, right? Now, I am going to ask you for range of something to do with reciprocals. And since range of cotangent is all real, so I'm going to ask you a range question for secant or for cosecant where there's a vertical stretch and maybe a vertical displacement. We did one like that last lesson, I think, in the examples. Somewhere, I'm going to give you, ask you for something to do with the absolute value of a trig function. Probably what it'll be is I'll give you the trig function with an absolute value and say, now tell me the range. Anything that was below flips up. Anything that was above stays. You have to visualize it a little bit first because if it was a big chunk above and a little chunk below, that would, I'll let you think about it. Do a little sketch if you're not sure. Um, otherwise, most of the rest of the multiple choice, well, it's going to be either special triangles, exact values, or uh, I think there's three or four questions that involve x, y, and r, and one with numbers. Oh, the point 3, comma 7 is on your graph. Tell me the cotangent as an exact value. Oh, I better find r and then cotangent. Why, that's x over y. I would never ask you that because I gave you x and y. 
So ask me for cocancer, it'd be too boring. I'd ask you for secancer cosecan. Give me some X, Y, and R stuff. Um, and I've already told you the written section is going to have two graphs and three equations to solve. The first two equations are going to be between 0 and 2 pi. One of them is the reciprocal equation. And then the last equation is going to be sine, cos, or tan. And it's going to be a domain shift. I can't remember what I picked for my domain shift. I don't think I picked negative pi to positive pi because I did that with you as examples. I think I picked something a bit different just because I was bored. Okay. Um, be prepared when you're solving the trig equations. Remember the weird ones that are on here when you have a 1 or a 0 or an undefined. Usually that means you're right on one of these and your cast rule no longer works. Then we fell back on the whole unit circle idea. We spent a day looking at that. Um, Otherwise, I don't think you'll find too many surprises. There is, uh, look at your quizzes. You're going to see one question that you'll say, hey, Mr. Dewitt didn't do a big song and dance about, oh, wait a minute, he gave us one like this on the quiz. Ah, that's why he gave us one like this on the quiz. Okay. I've given you three quizzes, right? It was quiz one, quiz two, and then I called it quiz 2.5. I think the answer keys are online in terms of video. And I think I put the answer keys online as PDFs as well. If not, I'll do that tonight. So having rambled for a while and finished four minutes ahead of my 415 thinking, question and answers for the remainder of this, I'm totally willing to go. Now, you know what? Let me ask, who's planning on staying longer for question and answers? Or who's going to ask it the other way? Who's planning on leaving right now then? None of you? Okay, I'll keep going then. I just wanted to know if you were leaving. If I had like 15 of you, I was going to print up a bunch of these tutorials. But if you're sticking around, I'll print it up when most people are ready to leave. You can get one tomorrow. Or if you email me tonight, I'll email you one. But you remember to email me. I'm going to be watching North Carolina play Duke, but I'll have my laptop in front of me. And yes, that's how much I, life I have. I do schoolwork while I have fun. Depressing. So uh, from the reviews, which ones would you like me to go over? From which, uh, there's, there's the first one or the second one? Love to. And I think I'm going, well, I'm going to say I at least partly like number 18. I at least partly like number 18. Number 18 has some good stuff. Okay. Whenever they give me something like this, um, read the question. <sighs> Algebraic, you know what, this is going to be an x, y, and r question. Okay. They want me to find tangent. Tangent is what over what in terms of x, y, and r. Lorenz? Yeah. Ah, yes. So I'm going to say this. Tan theta is going to be y over x. Now that almost always means that they give me another trig function. And that trig function will give me two of x and y and r. Here's what they gave me, except I see this. That's what I see. I see it as a fraction. Because sine is what over what? You know what? I think y is m and r is 1. I'm sure of it. Now, don't make me have to give you that hint on the test. If it's not a fraction, it is a fraction. Everything is a fraction. It's always over 1. Or if they'd give me a fraction like m over n, I would say, oh, m is y and n is r. Um, they also told me that we end in quadrant 4. That's here. Will tangent be negative or positive? Shanna, is that okay? Right? Terminal arm is in quadrant four. The quadrants go one, two, three, four. Right? So tangent, will they want me to find tangent. Will tangent be negative or positive? This would be a multiple choice question, by the way. I'm just saying tangent is positive here. So it's got to be negative here, right? Oh, let's find r. How are r and x and y related? Why? We have that handy Pythagoras little uh, x squared plus y squared equals r squared. In fact, I think that x equals the square root of r squared minus y squared. 
I think it's going to be this. Let's see. Y m over, which makes sense, by the way. Would not y be negative down there? I like that. Uh, x, oh, square root of. Should be what it says in the back. I hope, I think, I hope, I think, I hope. Negative m all over square root of 1 minus m squared. Answer key has a positive there. Let me think for a second. Okay, hang on. Let me, sorry, what were you going to say, John? Okay, this is what I would... Oh, good catch. I consider this a cheap question. I didn't, know, I didn't read this one and catch that. They've done this once in a while on the provincial. I will never do this to you. In this quadrant, is sign negative or positive? Negative. Is there a negative sign in front of the M? Then where is the negative sign, John? It must be hit. The M itself must be negative. It must be a negative number. So since the M itself is actually a negative number, and that's what the negative number is coming from here for tangent as well, I guess they didn't put a negative in front because they're arguing that M itself is negative. I hate that question. I love everything else about this question, but what I would do is I would put a negative in front. To me, that's so cheap. I, you know what, though? I know the guy who wrote this, and I bet you he wrote number 18 after a question just like this came on the provincial exam. A question like this came out, I think, in 04 or 05. I hated it because almost every kid was so proud of themselves for catching this negative and saying, aha, uh -huh, and that was one answer to pick from. And they were mean. They even made that the first answer to pick from. And the correct answer was the positive one because sign, which was supposed to be negative, didn't have a negative in front of it, so it must have a negative built in. That's where that negative was supposed to come from. Oh, please. <sighs> in fact, you know what? I got to pause the video. It was a proud moment. Is that, Kevin, is that what you're wondering about, why it was positive? Everything else about that question I love, okay? I just think that's a really cheap loophole. I will not do that to you on your test. And I don't think they should ever do that to you on the provincial. I think that's too obscure. If they didn't have the negative answer to pick from, I would live with it. Like if they didn't have that on the multiple choice to choose from, then I would say, okay, then the kids will clue in. Oh, my answer is not there. There's got to be something we, oh, because John saw it. I mean, John sees it. And, oh, well. <laughs> Next. Jim? 8A. 8A from which review? From second one or the first, first half or second half? First one? I nuked eight. Oh, really? Yep. I said those are decimals. Uh, since you can't do them without a calculator, I won't give those to you on test. Next test, when you can use a calculator, sure. So nine, arc length. Okay. And fifteen. That sounds. I think fifteen is an x, y, and r one, if I recall. Uh, number nine, what is the length of an arc right away? I would say, oh, this is arc length, and I have a handy way to remember the arc length formula. It's A equals R theta. It's the word arc, sort of. Uh, they, oh, and they want me to find the length of the arc. So they want me to find A. Circle has a radius of 15, and the angle is pi over 5. Okay, divide by 5, divide by 5. The answer is 3 pi. That should be what it says in the back, or does it have decimals? You got them wrong? That's the disadvantage of the ESL. In English, we know that's the word arc, and you're going to memorize in a different language. Sorry, my trick doesn't work great for ESL students, but I think it works great for the English kids. Sorry. So it, it, does it say 3 pi in the back, or does it have it as a decimal, like 9 point something? 3 pi. I, I, that would be an exact value kind of a question. Okay. And again, there's going to be one arc length question. And I will ask you either to find A or R or theta, but I'll give you the other two. Be really, really careful. Once in a while, instead of giving you a radius, they'll give you a diameter. What do you have to do to find the radius then? Five by two. Uh, and once in a while, they'll give you an angle in degrees. No, no, arc length formula doesn't work for degrees. Change it to radians. I don't think I'm doing that on your test, but it happens on the provincial. And I'm pretty sure at the end of the year on one of my mock provincials, I'll do it then.
but by that, that'll be at the end of the year. That'll be right around when you guys are all thinking about grad and not serious about school. That's when I really hammer you guys. Uh, and which one? 15? 15, yeah. I like 15. Yeah, sure. I like 15. I had to quickly read it to see if it was another cheap one. I don't think it is. That's why I said I like. I said that for the other one. Now I'm going. No, that was a cheap, sneaky one with the extra negative. Um, what do they want me to find? Secant. Um, I see they've given exact values, but this is not special triangles. I think this is x, y, and r question. So right away, I'm going to say, well, secant theta is secant goes with cosine. Secant is r over x. Now, what did they give me here? Cotangent. Cotangent is what over what in terms of x and y and r? I think x is 3. Oh, by the way, I'll do that right away. And y is root 13, so I need to find r. r squared equals x squared plus y squared. r is going to be the square root of x squared plus y squared r is going to be root 22. Now, let's double check the positive or negative, because it tells me the terminal arm is in quadrant what? 3. 1, 2. We're in this quadrant. In that quadrant, is secant negative or positive? Negative. By the way, in that quadrant, is cotangent negative or positive? Oh, so they're not trying to sneak a double negative, a sneaky move on me like they did in that last question. You know what? There's got to be a negative there, which makes sense because in this quadrant here, my x-coordinate would be negative, as would my y-coordinate. It is negative root 22 over 3, I hope, in the back, yes? I haven't proofread the answer key, but my friend who made these, he's a teacher from Terry Fox, he's more careful than I am. I doubt there's any mistakes, but maybe. Any others? Second review. 2C or not 2C? That is the question. At least he didn't ask 2B. To D as well. These are both way, 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 way tougher than I would ask. Okay? So I'm going to walk through these with you. 2C... I've seen them as the nasty that year on the provincial. 2D, yuck. But if you understand me going through 2D, then you're probably in good shape. So let's take both of these then. I left them in your homework, though, because I wanted to – that was the only secant and tangent ones that I could see that weren't totally gross. Ah! Both of these. Look, 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 look. Both of these not factored. Oh, those mean people. Both of these I'm going to have to rewrite before I actually do any stuff. So I'm going to have to rewrite this as y equals. I wonder what that yell is going to sound like on the internet. You know, I should really set people up. What I should do is I should talk quietly for about 30 seconds so that they turn the volume up on their computer and kind of move back. And then lean in and do the, yeah, oh, that'd be great. Note to self. Okay. Blow the speakers. <sighs> X minus what? Uh, oh, when I factor a 3 out, what mathematical operation am I performing? Division. That's the same as adding an extra 3 in the bottom. Dividing is the same as putting it in the bottom of the fraction. It's going to be... Pi over 6. We'll tackle the secant in a second. Uh, first of all, tangent. You know what the range is? It's all reals. So range, there's your answer. All reals, all reals. And for cotangent, you know what the range is? All reals. Even they, you know what? If they, if they slide it up, that's still all reals. If they stretch it, it's still all reals. Even if they flipped it, 
still all real. So, okay. We're more interested in the domain for this one. Ignore all this junk. Okay. Oh, boy, this is really going to be yucky. I would consider this a fair game but yucky question if they didn't have the vertical displacement. And I'll show you why in a second. I think. Normally, tangent has a domain. X can't be... It was where the asymptotes were. Do you remember? It was pi over 2 plus multiples of pi, where n was an integer. See that? You're right. Multiplying backwards. See that? It's going to be a phase shift, pi by 6 to the right. Now, that's only going to move this. It's not going to move how far apart they are. We've already shrunk them. Now slide them sideways. The pi over 3n is going to stay the same. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to add pi over 6 to that there. Does that make sense? It's kind of crowded, but it's actually going to turn out to be fairly nice because I think I'm going to get this. x can't be. Can you see this is pi over 6 plus pi over 6? It's 2 pi over 6. Nope, oh, running out of room. It's going to be pi over 3 in lowest terms. I'll reduce that in a second. Plus pi over 3n. And so I'm going to reduce that to just plain old pi over 3. Is that what it says in the back? Can you check the domain for me, please? Yeah, it's like pi, pi n over 3 but not pi over 3 plus pi n over 3? Okay. Here's the problem. Watch. Here's your standard, here's your tangent graph after the phase shift. So it's been moved over a little bit. It looks something like, oh, good gosh, Mr. Do it. It looks something like this. And your asymptote would be right here. And your asymptote would be right here. Let me think for a second how I'm going to explain this. It says pi over 3. Oh. I know why. Sorry. What's that? What's that? Are you saying you could probably just combine those? And just make that a single pi. That your first one is at pi over 3. That's when n is 1. Your second one is at pi over 3 times 2. Your third one is at pi over 3. So what the author did is he simplified this. He said, you know what? Those are like terms. Pi over 3 plus pi over 3 times a random number is going to be pi over 3 times another random number. So we did do that one right, and I accept that. Okay. <sighs> this one. Got to go. It's fine. I will post this online as well, a, a PDF copy of this. If I can, I'll even try and email it to you guys. I just don't know if the file is going to be too big. Uh, factor. Bleh. Y equals 4 secant. Factor out the 1 half. X plus, I have no idea, minus 5. You're dividing by a half. Dividing, when you're factoring, dividing by a half, same as multiplying by what? When you factor, you're dividing by a half. That's the same as multiplying by what? In other words, instead of pi over 8, it's going to be, or, that's your phase shift. Okay? Sorry, I'd walk through it in more detail, but I can tell I'm losing you guys, and, and that's fine. Range. Let's do range first. Because I would consider this a fair game for range, but I wouldn't consider this fair game for domain. Trig function. Remember, secant was everything below and touching negative 1, comma, everything above and touching positive 1. 
What's that? Vertical or horizontal? It's in front, so it's vertical. And it's not backwards because it's not next to the y where it belongs. It's an expansion by a factor of 4. In other words, instead of negative 1, negative 4, instead of positive 1, positive 4. What's that? Moves the whole graph how? Yep. And since these are both y's, they're going to be affected by the verticals. 5 down. 5 down. That's your new range. You want to do domain? You feel unlucky? Let's try domain. Whew. Secant. I don't remember. Goes with which trig function? Okay, cosine was 0 at pi by 2, 3 pi by 2. Okay, secant originally was going to be x can't be pi by 2 plus multiples of pi, where n is an integer. That's your expansion factor. Everything's backwards. Instead of multiplying by a half, you're going to times by 2. Times by 2, times by 2. And I know that'll simplify. I'll take care of that in a second. Then I have my phase shift. Now, my phase shift isn't going to change how far apart the asymptotes are. It's just going to move it over so the first one's going to start somewhere different. Is that to the right or to the left? To the left, so I'm going to minus a pi by 4 from that guy. Okay? The domain is going to be, you know what? To do this, I need a common denominator. I'm going to write this as 4 pi by 4 minus 1 pi by 4. Can you tell me what 4 pi by 4 minus 1 pi by 4 is going to be? This one's going to start off at 3 pi by 4. And then they're going to be every 2 pi and the part. Is that what it has in the back, I hope? It's 2 pi and 2 and 2. Yay! I hope you followed that explanation. I'm not going to give you one quite that yucky. Range, I'd feel comfy as one of the trickier ones, sure. Because the range, you're not having to pull a bunch of fractions and junk and things. Oh, these would all be multiple choice. I told you what the range is. Two graphs, graph them. One sine, one cos, I'll even tell you that. Uh, and then uh, three equations, solve them uh, as exact values using special triangles or the unit circle if it's an undefined or a zero or a one. And one of the three, the last one of the three is going to be a domain shift. So solve it like it's between zero and two pi. And then find the coterminals to get whatever domain that you need to. I suggest 16 multiple choice, 1 6, 2 to the 4th, 4 squared, square root of 256, uh, 1.5 each in math. Again, don't ask me why, and I'm probably going to stop doing that next year because the provincials aren't quite as important as they used to be, but I used to make sure I graded exactly the same way as the provincials since they were worth 40% of your grade. I figured I may as well do it the same way. Yep. 4 from which one? 4a? Oh, there's going to be one multiple choice where I ask you to find an equation, so this might be a good practice. I think we'll end with this, and then I'll print up however many copies that I need. Ooh, some of you wanted the review. Who? You want one? You want one? The other five that I printed, they left? Yeah. Waste of paper. They can see me tomorrow. Okay. Wait a minute, your test is tomorrow. Well. <sighs> they want me to write this as a sine equation. I would uh, probably go like this. I would add that dotted line because I feel much better with that. I would add that dotted line because I feel much better with that. What I'm really interested in is where the middle is. How high does this graph go? Uh, is that 10 or tw I think it's 12. Right, look at the scale. How low? Negative 4. What's the total distance here? 12 to negative 4. What's the total distance? Well, the total distance 
16. What's the amplitude? Okay, so I know it's this. 8. If that was multiple choice, you might be able to cross out a bunch of wrong answers already. Ooh, what did you say the amplitude was? 8. How high does my graph go? 12. If I drop 8 down, 12, 2, 4, 6, 8. This should be the middle of my graph. Is that the middle of my graph? It's also my vertical displacement. How high? You might be done. You might, if it was multiple choice, that might be enough to say, ah, I got all the rest of them. Uh, I doubt it is, though. Let's see. Oh, they want me to use sine. Okay. If I want to graph this as sine, where does sine start? Top, middle, or bottom? Right there. What's my phase shift? Two squares right. Now I need to figure out what one square is worth. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight squares make up pi, so I think each square is worth pi by eight. So my phase shift is two pi by eight to the right. Of course, if it was multiple choice, I wouldn't write it as two pi by eight. What would I write it as if it was multiple choice? Okay, my phase shift is x minus pi by 4. Last thing I need is b, not the period. The period helps me find b, but the period doesn't appear in my equation. b does. Well, from there to there is one wave. From top to top or from bottom to bottom is one wave. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, Seven. Oh, 8 squares. What was 8 squares worth? Ah, the period is pi. That means b is going to be 2 pi over the period. There's going to be a 2 there. That's the equation. Multiple choice, when you have four answers in front of you to pick from, it's a lot easier because you can use a process of elimination and get to the right answer often a lot sooner. Rarely do you have to find all four of them to get the right answer. Usually you can get it to, in two or three.